I do as a sub? Okay, whatever. Alright, moment of truth. It's gonna fail horribly. Yes, of course it will. No exception was thrown when one was expected. Really? Just nothing. Is it just because of optional? Hold on. Okay, it's just optional. Okay, first of all, okay, yes. Check false. Right? No, no, this isn't going to work either. There's a bunch of requires where they are failing for YAML CPP exceptions and unknown exceptions that I just not covering yet. I need more cases. I need way more cases. So back to the sorter. So it's a good thing I didn't jet, like have the code to generate the sorter because I need way more cases than what I already have. So let's scrap all these. Let's scrap them. They're gone. What we're going to do is we're going to have to stay in the prefix or uh, test set. Test that string. This is going to be up at the top. Great. Equals blank. Great. We're going to get rid of this. It prefixes that. Okay. If. Test set is that. Yay, yay, yay. And we're going to scrap that. Okay. We can integrate this into here. So if. Plus equals what zero? This is zero, the zero case. Else, whoop, get out of here. Test set plus equals one. Otherwise, test set plus equals three. Uh, sorry, two. Similar here. Zero, one, two, three, four. Otherwise, five. Test set six, seven. Test cases, so are, we've almost doubled them from four to eight. Right, one, two, three, four to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. All right. Uh, so back to the sort. Uh, okay. One thing I need to do is I need to clear out what's in there before we begin. deletion of stuff in there. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> 
So let's have a look. We have some 0, 4, and 6. Okay. 1, 3, 6, 7. What? Sorry, how does this work? So how is six and seven working correctly? I don't understand this. Oh no 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 no! It's because in the struct parsing, right? Um, reading required. Read required. Everything underneath it is optional. Okay. So it'll just be it'll be there. It'll just be blank, I guess. I mean, yeah, ah, oh, yeah, um, yeah, this is, uh, no, this is not going to work. Great. Now this just blows apart uh, a good portion of hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> hmm. But I need this function to deal with the interface I've out lined earlier in faux yaml to deal with lower level types this is terrible all right i guess there's not really much I can do about this right now. I'm gonna to have to. I'm gonna to have to figure something out. But th that, that's another level of, of bollocks I have to deal with later. I can't deal with it now. I've got too much other stuff. Okay, so let's do this the other way around. Sorter goes over here. Okay, check no throw. For case zero, yes. Otherwise, if... Wait. No throw true, no throw false, and then throws. Okay, no, 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 I don't need this case then. Two, three, four, five. If it's not zero one, then it's a then it's a catch case. So, if zero, else if like this, check no throw. Check false no throw. Check no throw false. Is there like a false? Uh, right, I guess we're just going with this. Just check and check false. And check throws. Just check it throws. We'll get other cases later. Zero, one, great. Uh, two and three, four. Five. We'll deal with the as later. No doubt there's problems. Read required. Need to really shrink all this down, get rid of these guys. Check, check false, check throws. Uh, this is subnode. 
Okay, make the test again. Mm. Oh, I didn't uh, resort. It's all resorted. Now we give it a go. No! Okay, what happened with the sorting? Oh, I need to I need to make sorter. That happens first, then that one happens. Okay. Resort. Uh, close. Two k two failing cases. Okay, great, 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 great. Read optional subnode. Yes. Okay. Now, curiously enough, I wonder if this has changed at all. Because this is this not the type I already have? VK pipeline depth stencil state create info. This is the exact same type. So let's see if I have any improvement in code coverage from the original 15 point whatever to now. There was a little bit? Was there? I mean, I guess. Oh yeah, no, maybe. Hold on, let me uh, pause and check the footage. <laughs> okay, yes, there is slight improvements, slight. But I get that makes sense because I already did cover a good portion of them through my manual tests already. But this will allow me to just really rapidly do all the types instead of just these two. <sighs> So, and that's not even including writing tests. I don't have writing tests yet. Ooh, yeah. Because that was just improving reading. I will probably require writing tests. Okay, how would I do write? You know what? No, 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 no. No bothering with the writing tests. I just got to get this done, I think. Or would I? Would I? I could put this as a large definition and just do it for all the different types, can't I? Okay, let's just... Okay, let's just do it for a completely different type. Let's actually just, you know, not run this so I can actually get accurate information. So do this, great. Making, we're running that, great. So it's back down to, let's say, that, great. Now what if I do a completely, I don't have a different type available yet. Okay. Okay. At this point, I just ha I I need to just get back on the train of generating the stuff, generating the code. So I'll just I'll just do that. So I need to generate the sort code. Which is much like this. It's very simple. Generate sorts source like this bam so let me find the sorter code that I have here it's right here great it's much like this it's very similar to actually that Except first true and all that stuff great put it here Uh, 
Okay, first of all, that's the same. So it's just that's the same. So it's just everything after that. So it's this portion of code. That's what matters. Wait, so this is basically the same thing as that. Almost. I need things with spaces after them, and I need a space after that, right? Okay, I need things with a single space before them. Space like that. Okay, and I need to do that here. So, do do ba 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 ba. ba. I need to do the same thing here, but going for the other way around. Da, 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 da. Da, da. Okay. Tools plus X Gen salt source. Why is this different? Why? I don't understand. Oh, and I need the uh, main to actually run it. Um, this looks stupid. There, there must be an, a blindingly obvious way of doing this better than that. I'm just not, I'm blind. I'm blind somehow. I know it. And I'm going to figure it out in a second. No doubt about it. Oh, that's right. I could just do use template, can't I? Uh, it's just a void. It just takes in what? Sort type, which takes in. Okay, we'll put it like here, and we'll just kind of have it be encompass this portion, that, and the it's going to be tests. So standard string and test set. That's the output, and then we're going to have what? Do I want that? I could put this in internally, right? I could do um, type name T and it's uh, just, just, you know, T data like that. Oh, I need the YAML data. That. Okay. And then we just do sort data times so it's not even this it's just you know do, 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 do. do I put the if and stuff inside no I can't put the string inside of it um OK, 
can I? Through a macro I can. Sort type X. And what it is is it's it does the if it does this part. Great. Uh, that X, great. And then it's like, hey, you know, uh, sort type X. YAML data test set. We don't really need, need to do the else if. I mean, it would have been faster, but I'm not going to be too bothered by it on the sorting stuff side. So rather, what I just need is that. So that's what? Sort type. Give it, give it to me, give it to me right now. Bam. Put a bit more work on the compiler. Okay. Make the sorter. Great. Does the sorter work as expected? <clears throat> uh, sorry. Looks like. Let's just delete these all. Have a little look. That's the speed you're deleting stuff? Come on, code. Okay. It looks good. So that's a lot uh, better than this. I just need to... figure out a different way to generate the uh, defines. The defines. I could probably do the same thing for the, the, the fuzz side as well, realistically. I really could. And on this side too. Can I do on this side? Can I do a macro and a macro? Hold on. Because test case will be a macro. So C macro in macro. Show me. Macros in C. Recur recursive macros. Mm. It's a VA opt. Macros can't be recursive. Dang! That is not cool. Okay. F the um, fuzz source. Can I change that? No, that's not that. It's the sort I was looking at. No, it wasn't that either. Get out of here. Out. Out. Was it this? No, it wasn't this. Where did I put it? Where did I put the define? Yeah, okay, it was in, it was in the sorter. Okay. That's a macro and a macro. That's not great. But I can put the rest of this in a template. To make it, I can really compact it down. It's 
the buzz macro for type X. So it's actually going to be doing this. Okay, and I need to put the X type. So it's like fuzz macro for this. That really cuts it down. And again, this is something I can actually bring down to a shell script instead of a Python script. Making it, making it a lot faster. Since so it is just the same code pasted over and over again. Right, right, right. I can make, oh, I don't have the AFL. S-D-A-F-L. Yes. I just ran that in a completely wrong directory and obliterated what I just had in the tools directory. Okay, well, uh, let me uh, spend a bit of time getting that back. Good job, me. Great job. Or, 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 I still have the files here, right? Oh, yes. I want to save it. Save it. Save it. <laughs> I have some of them. I have all the interesting ones. Okay. Generate corpus. That's the big one. That's here. Oh, yeah. The rest don't really care too much. Uh, the, the generated stuff. Do I have sorts not here? Nah, that's fine. Okay. Okay. Uh, for, first of all. Um, make files and source make files and remove this I'm probably missing s something from around here there'll be a couple of RMs right Removes, deleted. Here we go. You get back. Okay, we go down the out directory. Get rid of that. It's not wanted. Not required. Fuzzed input. That directory goes away. Goodbye. All right, we're back to the, down to this. So I want to uh, save what I have. Or stage it at least, so I don't lose it. Whoop. Thank you. Panic mostly averted. Okay. Uh, okay, <laughs> back to generating. I, I, I have the fuzz source. I don't really care about the fuzz source anymore, right? Only to a portion. Okay, let's do this uh, using shell scripts, which will be a bit easier here. So, shell script. We have a fuzz source. Um, where's my fuzz code? Here. So I don't need that, I just need this. I have the input file, so that'll be like, let's say, um, equals one. 
Yeah. Is that whatever that is? Great. Yeah. All right. So what I want to do is I want to. I need to. Four. Struct in what we're going to do is we're going to just go through, we're going to cat the file and we're going to grep out each of the lines that starts with VK has an indeterminate number of characters and then ends with a colon. I don't have a file. Uh, give me the structs.yaml. Great. Excellent. I just need everything except the last uh, character. So that's like what? Echo struct. Um. <clears throat> Move last character from string, please. Struct. Colon, colon, minus one. Like that. Okay, so for each of these, we're going to be printf. It's a multi line, yeah. Just this. If, oh, and. printf else, otherwise we print printf something like that, which is then going to be if blah, 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 like that. Oh, no, like this. Like that. So this struct equals that. All right. Line eight. We're looking for not equal. Else if I don't remember giving you new lines. Oh, yeah, okay, I probably did. Mm hmm. Nope, 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 nope. Nope, that wasn't it. That's way more compact. Return zero. That's one at the end. Oh, 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 
no, no, no. I need a... Now it's generating the fuzzing source. Now we need to generate the s s generate source sort source. This is a very similar kind of deal going on here. Going back to the sorter code. I'm just looking for sort type. That's it. I don't even need the. Actually, I don't even need the else. I just need this, right? Because once it's in, then it loops 100,000 times. So that's fine. So yeah, yeah, yeah. No, this is actually even easier. So I don't need first. I don't need this. I don't need that. It's gone. Great. So it's just sort type. Uh, print. That and that. <clears throat> that just leaves the this. Now, hmm. This is 90%. I can't do macro and macro, but I can at least do this. Okay. So we're going to have test case be something like this. rest of this though should no that can't that that string also can't be well but this can be part of the macro like put the macro in for the rest of this like this just bam right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. okay test macro um X and Y. Okay, that's that. This cut this. So that's X. This is hash Y. And then this is all just this could be a templated function. Of type Y with what? Iterator. No, oh, it just takes in inputter. Like that. And then we have, okay.
So from within here, then we run this. Yes. What do you mean? Input there. What are you going on about? Hmm? Do I not have string now? Am I crazy? Oh, the data type, right. I don't even need this. Uh, da, 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 da. So it's T data, like that. So it's more. I d Cannot open directory. Okay, that's that's fine. I accept that. That's what I'm expecting. Uh, where is it? There it is. So what I need <clears throat> is I don't even need this. I just need to run fuzz test macro with X and Y. The X and Y being X being this. And the Y being this. And that's enough. Undeclared identifier inputter. Okay, you're right. This is what it bo <clears throat> all boils down to, it's just that. So it's this, this, struct, struct. So chmod plus x generate. Copy this, back up a bit. <clears throat> That's what I had as a sort macro, right? Yeah. Like that. And I want to generate a new file. Which is that? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. <clears throat> then we run this. This is going to just fail a whole bunch of times, as to be expected. Six times. Six times. Okay. New process. It starts here. We generate the new corpus at the app directory. What I want to do, I want to like a temporary... Okay, we'll just put it in the app directory for now. Great. Great. 
I don't have a sort anymore, but that's fine. So then I need to go through and fuzz a bunch of times. Um, okay, let me grab the stuff I had before. This. That is not really portable. So for each type that I'm doing... Okay, I also need set E. I also may be may want to do string replace on these things on the fly as well, but not yet. To auto gen, like I want to <clears throat> do this, replace these with any updated structs, YAML information I have. I want to automate basically as much of this as possible. I'm saying. So let's say I have this. So for each, I can go through each YAML file. Equals one. I'm going to do that. Or, you know what? No. We'll just hit, use a YAML file. So we've got to go through each of these. Okay. I'm going to figure out this each struct. Oh, I also need the to <laughs> the RM that just killed me. This, which is oh, Generate the stuff, generate the corpus, then I need to go through. Push D. Then I need to go back to these, slash build. Then I need to do that. Pop back to where I am. Run for each of these. Do this for a period of time. Done. Uh, <clears throat> AFL. What was it? Fuzz. Fuzz. Dash eight eight right. Yeah. Um, seconds. Dash V. Okay. We'll do it for 60 seconds each or 120 seconds. One hundred and twenty seconds. Two minutes each. We will output the stuff to a specific directory each. That's correct. No, that's the input. The output is this. Okay, I need to do like out um, I need to make sure that this directory is, is existing. Okay. Then I need to go through and do the sorting of the data.
Okay, no, I first of all I need to go for each struct. Done. I need to do that. Do done. Okay, I also need to count. At this point, I need to kind of go back and change it to do fuzz and sort. I can do that. I can do both fuzz and sort. So I can go to wherever this is. This is no longer, we're no longer in that directory though. In the root directory, we need so. This that sort sorter sorter or sort sort or sorter sorter uh, struct type and then the file. Okay, we got that. And then we got the f that was a fuzz out. No, that wasn't the fuzz output we wanted. We wanted the fuzz corpus first, then the fuzz output. Uh, results. if we actually got a good result out of it. Then we're copying the file to back one directory and putting it into test fuzzed input. And it's count results.yaml. That's what we're doing. We've got the same thing for the fuzzed output. Then we will be doing the testing. So this is going to take a little while to run, presumably, if, it, if it's working at all. New process. All right, well, I'll be back when there's a problem or it completes. Or right away, actually. Uh, is there anything else that's not executable in here? Just those. That's fine. Okay, do it again. Okay, BRB. Win is, yeah. Well, that got halfway there. I got a lot of bunch of fuzz output and stuff but I don't actually have the fuzzed input yet so I need to figure out why the sort part of it isn't working hi so oh, no 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 give me all that no it's even worse give me the stuff back I wanna okay So, why? Fuzz corpus. Like, what, what's going on? Am I getting anything? Okay, I'm doing those. Oh, crap. Uh, I need to get rid of the first character. Let's make 
go with that. Let's do that here. There we go. Okay, my bad. Now do I have crap? Incorrect. So I need to make directory. I need to first of all make dir make sure that exists. Then anything that's inside of those. Then I need to make dir. Make sure that exists. Not quite. I need to do sort them out to these directories. Um, yeah. Okay, a bunch more tests. Going back to here, um, I've also changed it so, like, as part of the new process, it doesn't overwrite my regular build directory. It just creates a new build directory inside the tools here. So I don't actually, so I have just an AFL specific build right here, just for this stuff. Yeah, okay. Um, let me actually clear that out. Okay. So what we had, I don't know if this will be any good. Uh, do I actually have struct parsing? Like how many do I actually run? I run them all. Okay. So this is what I had. Let's uh, get rid of that. Get rid of that. Let's do this. Let's run it again. That is better. That's almost a doubling. The. 30%. But again, I'm only covering a, uh, only a number of the ones I have. That's a marked improvement. So, and I was only doing that for about 12, 15 seconds per run. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase this to 30, double it. And then I'm going to add all the other structs. And then I'm going to rerun it and see what comes out of all that. So, I'm going to not show this off it's going to take a little while so brb again okay so it's done through another round uh this time it should include all the uh types all of them a bunch more way more in what no 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 what okay i've got a whole bunch i got a whole bunch yeah yeah It didn't sort out right. Okay. Okay. 
Okay. I'll just put it in a temporary thing then again. again um, and this still doesn't include actually a new script for generating the actual like uh, source yet but you know what I'll it's already been a long enough I'll just kind of leave this here so this was at like doubled so about 30% or so so it should be like since it's only dealing with reading stuff it's about 60% that leaves like the other what 30 40% is uh, the right, the right, um, the writing ones, right? That I just don't cover it all yet. Even that, even with all that, I'm still having all, I can almost... Wait, no, this is writing. I don't do this yet. That's writing as well. But on the reads, the readings, like, I have full coverage. I All the te all the little corners are dealt with, which is what I was looking for. Writing is a bit of a different thing. Not many on this one. It's a big one, though. And oh, again, this is writing, my bad. Okay, this is this is fantastic. This is fantastic. So next part, next part, next part. Let's skip all this. Okay, I don't really want all this, but I want this is fine. Why it didn't work fine or here then? I need that. That's all the new ones plus that. This is all the new input. I need this, this, and this. Great. Now that I know like a process for creating fuzzed uh, test data, now I can actually do this a lot faster on any future ones as well. That'd be good, that'd be good. All right. I need to kind of rearrange a little bit of this, but again, first of all, the thing I was going to do was on the testing. On this, in this struct parsing, I'm doing this, and I want to see like, hey, can I also do writing, right? If, okay, how much will I cover if I'm doing something like this, if that, I read it successfully. So what I want to do is I then want to like write it. So I need uh, two cases, right? All right, optional, something like that. Which is taking you know, uh, a blank node name, whatever. default data which is just uh, well the only default data we can do is just T right like that the data we have and the new node
then what's going to happen is and then I want to reread it again from this node and it's going to be you know yaml read required and then I want to I don't have a comparison between like this data and the new data so I need like then I need like some kind of comparison function compare you know check new data equals data something like that which I don't have yet so I'll leave that for next time along with uh, more stuff for um, like actually using Python to generate the actual code, like the actual struct, the these this code stuff that actually does it, the actual read and write functions that I am testing now. Okay, okay, okay. So going back to this, um, I now actually have. I updated the Vulkan Minilibs library to include a whole bunch of auto-generated comparison head, uh, functions like this for each single struct type times way too many. <clears throat> so I can start using that instead. So include, okay. Uh, struct compare, with H, I need to add source for that so struct compare just include it much like on this one so it's 2022 compare it's been much closer So now I can do, you know, um, comparison function. Which is like, how, how do I do this? Like, compare hash hash y, I think. And then here I'll have function which is boolean p compare function and it's like t con star t con star i want to do the p compare with two types it's a reference to that and a reference to that because they're pointers okay let's see how that's going oh and i need to add Vulcan mini libs. I need to actually add it here. So struct cleanup, struct compare will be another library. Of that's going to be happening. I need to close that up, close that up. We're going to go out here. This is going to be taking in target link libraries that and <clears throat> VK struct compare like that. So, back to this. YAML, write optional, YAML read required, and then compare. Uh, I'll also, for the moment, grab out YAML. Emitter.
YAML CPP emitter. So I can actually uh, put this out to So I can actually read something. Yeah, IL stream is still there. That's good. C stream. Okay. It's got all that. I want to then run. Libs info graphics ok libs yaml test test blah 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 run it so we got problems we it's not working great unexpected exception with message when I am writing something optionally ok on ok let's first of all let's see if I can uh, Spit this out. Like that. It only happens a couple times, seemingly. VK on this one. Stage flags, okay. That and that, okay. How is this wrong? Due to unexpected exception with message. So let's. Let's see. This is on the first, right? Yeah. Oh, uh, wrong application. Test. What's a test application? It better be full graphics VK, libs YAML. It's the one I'm looking for. Let's have to put that down. Great. Come on. Yeah. Come on, get past this. I don't want to. Okay, we're here. We're on 1034. That's data 111. Okay. Um, let's pull this up so I actually have this as a reference. That is one. Yeah, yeah, okay. So, go inside. Okay. Oops. Didn't quite mean it. Oh, all right. We already... Okay, we have an exception. Stage flags, fail to serialize, note as VK shader stage flags. Okay, so we've got data, and the default is that. Wait, hold on. That's backwards. That is backwards. Or which one's backwards? Data and then default data. Data is first, default data is second. Okay. And def oh, okay, they're just backwards. 
So that's not really great. Okay, so that's something I want to fix right now. So let me um, undo the commit. Get out of here. Unstage all this. Let's fix that. First of all, VK type parsing. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. Okay, it's just... He did that, that backwards. All right. That's that's fine. That's fine by me. Minor. My bad. All right. So if I go, if I come back in, you okay, can struct parsing. If I go back into the Close that, close that, close that, close that. Nope, I didn't want to actually close that one. Yeah, that's correct. Default data if. I mean, it doesn't really matter one way or the other. As long as the correct one is the one that's being passed through. So that's fine. We'll do that again. We'll see how that goes. Right. One, three, four. Go inside. Same thing, right? State flags fail to serialize node as VK series. Okay. Great. Fixed incorrect. Um, hold on. That actually does mean that they were in the wrong order anyways, right? They always were. That means they were all auto-generated incorrectly as well. So let's do that. Let's not do this. Okay, so that was that. That was my bad. VK struct parsing. I'll need to regenerate this. Even if I'm not use, going to keep it for long, I, sh I need to fix it. So, write optional default data to data. Okay, da okay, here we go. Default data and data dot that. Okay. So let's go to that, that goes away. Okay. Finish with that. So CD do, 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 do libs. Go. Okay, we got that. That spits out this file, which then goes to the source side right by here, like that. Including here. One here, one here. Okay. Let's see if it's gonna what's going at what point it's going to break. It's gonna break on something else for sure. Okay. 
but it is broken on it and oh okay it broke at a different point it broke later when it's trying to compare things okay i can live with that When writing optional VK YAML. Leading to errors. Simple enough. Uh, what do I actually have here? Okay, so it's still basically one thing off a of main line now. So that's fine. Let's scrap that. Let's go back to this. We got issues. Starting with here, we got this. This is this is failing to compare for whatever reason. So I need to check first of all that this is being written great. That it reads. Correctly and check check no throw. And then we compare. So we'll go down to here. Okay, hold on. Is this just a problem with like me not having it as a point oh it probably is. Alright, this is just no this is compare VK push constant range. This is correct. So what? S one and S two are separate things. Yeah, S one is entirely different from S two. I need to use the new data struct, first of all. new data okay is there a better way to do this can I do like um, CPP function as template parameter Passing a function as a parameter, no, not quite. Function as template argument. Template template parameter, maybe. Get out of here, cookies, I don't care. Mm. Okay, maybe not. I'll just I'll just leave it like this. P compare function. We'll do that. We'll check that this is true. Go back to here. Run it. Make test. Okay, we got through a couple without issue. Now we're here on 65034. This looks pretty dang bad. As part of writing optional, there's an exception of some sort and then it can't read and then we can't compare. 
Mm-hmm. So can I do this? I want to try. I've read it successfully, so I should be able to write it successfully. That follows, right? That, that, that should follow perfectly fine. See where this is going to happen. Okay, why is this at YAML? I can't get out of here. I don't know why it's not. Dang it! I. Okay. Uh, let us skip to VK descriptors set layout create info. This is the one we're looking at. The rest can all fall apart. Okay, we're here. We have the exception of stage flags. Failed to serialize node as this. Okay. Okay. Okay, when it's writing out the binding, we have what one one binding, one binding, and that's it right there. Stage flag zero, descriptor count zero, binding zero, immutable sampler. I don't think we can deal with. E is from the stage flags failed to serialize as VK shader stage flags. Yeah, hold on. I mean, you're right. VK shader stage flags does is indeed zero. But the problem is, isn't it, the fact that it's expect because VK shader stage flags. There is no zero value for shader stage flags. So when I'm reading as part of part of struct parsing, um, these up here, when I'm reading optionally, I'm taking it as an optional when it should really be required or should it? No, hold on. What's happening? I'm writing as required. Should I be writing as required? Should I? No, I shouldn't. It should be writing as optional. 
that I can use override abilities, shouldn't I? So this is another thing to do with this. Did I not put that in? I thought I would have put that in as part of the last thing. That would have made sense. Yeah, put that in. Okay, right optional, right required. No, when you're writing optionally, it should be also optional. Okay, let's do that. Back to tools. That. that mm -hmm. got two locations which is this oh and as part of that I also need to optional default data <clears throat> Right, I don't have default data to uh, Right, yeah, this is not good. So I, I, I need to do like something like that realistically to do it. I'm actually having a real serious doubts about how I'm doing this now. For doing like recursive items, it really doesn't make anywhere near as much sense. I may want to break it up, <clears throat> how I'm doing the writing system. So I only write the stuff that's in the struct. And if you want to do like things that that struct points to, then you need to go in and you need to do separate writes for that in the calling area, rather than trying to do it implicitly at part of here. Because doing it part of implicitly as part of here means like the default data is probably not going to have. It may not have. Default data. Um, maybe, maybe, whatever. I want to have to rewrite this a little bit to figure it out. 
in the future. But for the moment, I got that in, right? Struct parsing, yeah, no. This one. So I'm gonna have to build. See how broken this is. It's fine. It's better. So let's open it up to these ones again and see what breaks. One. One case left. Ah. It's getting better. Input assembly state create info. Oh no, no, it's part of the depth stencil. Sorry. See, there's a whole bunch of edge cases that I did not properly test and failed to account for. Thank goodness for this AFL stuff. So, what point does it fail? On the check. Okay. Well, I actually could have failed there too. And just I would have done nothing about it. Okay, we failed to do that. Why? What's what's going on here? New data versus data. So we got a flag of one, great. Zero zero, great. Compare never, great. Zero zero, great. Uh, the other two are zero zero, great. Back and front, stencil keep. Stencil keep keep never one one one. Keep 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 never one one one. Keep, 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 never one, one, one. They are the same. Okay. Let's do it again and see precisely where it's going to fail. Explain. Flags? No. No. It's in this that it failed. Okay. So I got a bit of a problem going on there. So let's see if we can figure this out. Okay. Return true. Oh my god, I generated the whole header with the comparison to supposed to be the other way around. Okay. Yeah, yeah. My bad. So let me fix that real quick and we'll get back on this train in a second. Okay. Let's do this again. Yeah. Okay. Much better. We're getting much improved.
Check that. Okay. Let's re-enable all of the cases, please. Oh, come on. Okay. Pipeline rasterization. Failed to write it. Okay. Pipeline rasterization. State create info right there. So back to this one. Sure, you got it. Hmm. the right optional okay let's try this it just expands to false for whatever reason so oh. let's do it again on the same note new new node great Explain why. I mean, it's just a plain old f false. Hold on. Is it just because everything is zeros? This is what? It may just be because it's all zeros. Wait, no, that makes no sense because subnode. Wait, what? What's going on here? Hmm. Okay, uh, this type is what? That's a zero. GK polygon mode fill. So it is all zeros. So yeah, it actually can be just a zero. Default data is zero, 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 paste clockwise. It is literally just is a nothing. Okay. So uh, this is another case that I just haven't. Okay, you know what? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it passes or not. It just, you know, check no throw. I just can't throw. Right, no, no catastrophic failure. Then it does this stuff. I just want to and check no throw, check no throw. Make sure you're actually going to be in a past. Did it? Whoop! No, I didn't mean to do that. No. I think this is making it worse.
Okay, if this is all handled well enough... then I'm feeling quite confident that I should now be able to... My old stream goes away. Optional case. Do the right optional. Do we do read uh, right required? I don't know if that actually... That really does much. We'll, we'll see. We'll, let's have a look at how how it works. Yeah, no. Can I write optionally as a sub? now this is this is good this is a good state mm -hmm. Let's see how this one works mm, doesn't Well, <clears throat> this is pretty terrible. I mean, much better testing, sure. But, okay, I need to kind of roll back into, first of all, test source. So it becomes that we need to add a semicolon there. Fix that. Sort source is still good. Yeah. Fuzz source is still the same. Great. Corpus. Mm, I could definitely make an improvement on the corpus. Because right now, all of the initial corpus is just like the first value. For when, when you have like enum types, enum or flag types, it's always just taking the first one that's available, the first one that's available with counts of one. I need more than that. I need to actually go through and uh, through them all, basically, as much as I can. Um, I mean, I'm impressed with the amount of st stuff I've managed to get through that, but still. I got the new process, right? I got the whole process kind of sorted out. I'll just kind of shrink it down to 10 seconds, even five seconds when you do it. This takes a little while. And I also need this, still, I still need the script for uh, creating the original struct parsing stuff. I want to switch it from this. Okay, generating corpus. 
Printing the struct. Which is what I call here. Okay. I am... Um, okay. Count equals one. Starts on the first. And I'm just going to do like a, a modulus offset, basically, of that. So it's always like... that up and then we're going to want to give the count into this struct name count hmm I need a kind of a thing for here okay I start with a count of one and some kind of variable. It says, hey, you know, uh, still, there's still. The entropy. Equals false. So I need to go through this while count equals one or new trippy. We go through this process where we have count and we have out root out sub so out entropy. New entropy is going to be a <clears throat> okay, I'll just get to it in a moment. Got that, we got count. And the entropy there. So where we have like enum here, we're going to say, you know, it's this. If enum that. Mm, how's this work? Enum count. Okay, um, val count equals uh, length of enum data. If val count. equals zero, then we got text as that. Otherwise, equals count mod val count. Yeah. If If our count is greater than count, then new entropy equals true. That way, every time we're introducing a new item, a new like uh, enum, like uh, value, each time another one of these. God, get out of the struct area. Every time a new one of these is used, then it counts as a, as a uh, new um, new entropy. And as soon as that runs out, you know, then it'll start looping through. But it's but it's always based on like as long as there's one new value coming in, new entropy will continue to return true. As soon as it, go, it exhausts all the different values, then it'll return false and it'll stop the loop. 
and it'll have to go into substructure because print struct is down here somewhere as well. Yeah. That, 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 count. New entropy. I cannot type that. And this will be the same thing. I need to do this down here too. So that was enum data, just this type. Hmm. Okay, it's going to have to be this way. So this, this, then we got to do basically uh, there's new entropy available. So come keep that. Come uh, so come back. That then we gotta go with this case here. There's just nothing there. Else uh, get out of here. Count mod cal count. Now is this how you do Python modulo? It is percent? Okay. It's just all white, so I can, can't really see it. Like it's no... I mean, I guess, yeah, all the things are... Yeah. Interesting. Uh, down a new process. Let's kind of go down to... This point, and then exit. Oh crap, yeah, I need to actually increment uh, count as well. So when we are out, okay. Really? Nothing? Really? Really? Are you sure about that? New entropy equals to true. And we're supposed to return it. It never happens. Or am I just crazy? Like, did this never happen? It happened. As expected okay so new entropy should be there should be sometimes true sometimes come on False, false, false. It's always false. 
why is it always false? Hmm? Um. Okay, let's do it. Let's do it again a uh, different way. Let's see if we can do this, and then return. that it's hot stuff it falls we'll just return it the old-fashioned way There we go. <clears throat> that's the that's what I was looking for. So let's see, you know, 22, 23. See, yeah, it's going through the different stage flags. Nice. That's what I was hoping for. Um, so I think with a lot of maybe no, not as many. No, not that many either. Surprisingly few. That only has the one flag, so yeah. There we go. There's a lot of types in here. All the different formats, right. Hmm. Even if they're really not all should be there, but you know. Let's see if I can uh, run the new process and see how that happens. So, BRB, well, this takes a while, a little while. All right, well, <clears throat> as long as that's happening, I may as well just continue on with actually generating the source code again to replace. The uh, original shell script, which is this thing. So let's close all this up. Open this file raw, put it to the side, <clears throat> and here we are. So I got the basics, just up to loading and opening the files and going into the main loop and filtering out what we do not care about. So I'm not going to bother with the this stuff up here, I think. 
what I do care about is this stuff. So, how did I do this? On a new thing, I would do this, and then at the end, I would clean them up. Okay. And then I have three types of cases otherwise. Yeah, this is simple enough. This is a copy paste job, but if I'm doing it in YAML, I'll have much, uh, I'll have access to this monstrosity for the next ML file for a lot more better data rather than relying on uh, this. So, that, so, yeah. There's the four, okay, there's the four things. Read optional, read required, these three things, uh, one, two, three, and it should basically be this, right? So read required. Okay, I need to dot format for the struct name. Yeah. I'm also going to need to double up that. Double up this and this. Oh no, there's more. Whoops. And that's doubled up, and that's doubled up. Okay, then we get read optional, which goes all the way to here. Similar deal. I know there's improvements that I really should be doing, but I don't have. I need to focus on just on just getting, uh, transplanting the code, getting it working, and then working on improvements. So I've really been spending enough time on this stuff already as is. Okay, that's a start. Then at this point, we'd have to get out of here. We'd have to go through the members for This, I believe, members. Find all struct members, yeah, okay. Yeah.
and then we'd have something to finish it off afterwards. Oh, I'd also need to... Oh, I'm just printing this straight up, right? I don't actually need... Oh, no, I need to do them in order. Right, yeah. This looks messy. Uh, finish. So then we get to this portion here at this point. So we'll read optional. Just plus this stuff. required okay All right, so running that, uh, <clears throat> fixing a number of issues, kind of rearranging some uh, data folders because I've spent enough time on this. Just kind of slowly uh, getting done. The output is 679 out of, and I've maxed out, I've capped out the generating generation of corpus to be like five of each. So five, five regular five subs. So all the rest is just stuff that's generated from fuzz uh, data. You can actually see it from here. All these, by far the majority are fuzz out is fuzz output. So that's looking good. Uh, so let's see if I can actually run CCOV. All not quite. Okay. What I'm going to do for struct parsing then is for the moment, I'm going to, this is probably where it's failing. It's just this as usual. That, okay. So what I had here, when I began was GK struct parsing, 15-ish, 10 to 15 percent across the board for, you know, leading to what, 26 to 47 percent. So refresh this with the new information. Now it's what, basically 60 percent across the board for this struct parsing. So that's all, basically all the reads, basically none of the writes, leading to um, an improved number. So... 47, 26 to 31, 51. Yeah, there is an improvement there. Not much. There's a lot of other stuff that I don't test, but hey. I've implemented fuzzing. I got fuzzing to be able to 
generate some very valuable test data and then check for uh, crashes based on like randomized and just iterative input, which is a great leap for me. May not be quite useful right now, especially since YAML, Vulkan YAML is kind of more of a temporary thing, but I'm this will be something I will be carrying forward now that I know how to do it and how to use it, especially when I get down <clears throat> into like uh, creating binary formats or dealing with networking. But, and yeah, I don't, oh, do I even want to do that? I'm not sure if I actually want to keep the data with me right now. USH data. 2.6 megabytes worth of fuzz data. I'm not going to keep this, I'm not going to carry this along with uh, the application for sure. And I'm probably going to, I'm going to rip that out. That's not going to be useful. We'll do that. We'll just set it back to this. Um, I don't want that, that, just like that, run the fuzz process. It's there, it's doable, it's usable, I can expand upon it in the future. It does improve things if I let it. So, I think I'll get, I'll, I'll just leave it there, AFL is there. Time to make better use of it sometime in the future. Cheers.